Number two, integrated concepts. An ultra centrifuge accelerates from rest to 100,000 RPM in two minutes. Letter A, what is its angular acceleration in radians per second squared? All right, so just a little picture here. Uh, we have a certain centrifuge, you know, with these characteristics. Initial uh, angular velocity, zero RPM. Final would be 100,000 RPM. The time over which we're analyzing this change in angular velocity is two minutes. All right, and we notice we need the standard units of angular acceleration of radians per second squared. So basically, uh, we need to convert um, the RPM into radians per second, and we need to convert the time into seconds. All right, so we need to do that first. Uh, so why don't we do that up at the top here, 100,000 RPM. That's a revolution, and uh, let, me write, let me rewrite it this way, revolutions per minute. It's easier to see how to convert them. Right, for every one revolution, there are two pi radians. So the revolutions go bye-bye. And then we want to cancel the minute, so the minute goes on the top. There, For every one minute, there are 60, 60 seconds. Seconds go on the bottom. Bada-bing, bada-boom. And here we go. So 100,000 times 2 pi divided by 60. So we're going to get a value I'll put in scientific. So 1.05 about times 10 raised to the fourth. And this is uh, radians, R-A-D, radians per second. All right, so we took care of that. Now, same thing here with the time. Why don't we just convert that into seconds as well? I think that's a relatively uh, easy conversion, right? Minutes into seconds, for every minute there's 60 seconds, two minutes, then 60 times two, so that's gonna be 120 seconds, all right? Now, basically, how do we find the angular acceleration? Well, it should have this formula memorized, but I mean, basically, we're going to be using uh, this formula over here, all right, where it gives us that the uh, angular acceleration is going to be equal to the change in your angular velocity, all divided by the change in time. So the angular acceleration here is, remember, the final angular velocity is 1.05 times 10 to the fourth minus then the initial was zero. I mean, zero RPM is the same as zero radian per second, right? So I'm not, there's no conversion that needs to be necessary or that's necessary to be done. So minus zero, all divided by then um, the time. So we calculate that to be 120 seconds. And here we go. So take that value. I'm gonna use the exact value from before, meaning instead of 1.05, I got 1.0, essentially 1.0471 or 72, whatever, divided by 120. You guys get it at this point. So uh, we're gonna have 87, and we'll do three sig figs, 87.3, 87.3 radians per second squared. And there we go. That's the value of the angular acceleration. That is letter A. Let me put letter A right there. Letter B. Uh, what is the ch uh, tangential acceleration of a point 9.5 centimeters from the axis of rotation. All right, so let's go to the circle over here. Here's the axis of rotation right in the middle, and we're looking for something. Let's pretend that this is the distance. Uh, this location right here is gonna be 9.5 centimeters, 9.50 centimeters from the axis of rotation. Remember, we're, you know, we need it in terms of meters. So just doing a quick conversion, that would be 0 0.0950 meters. I just move this decimal place two places to the left, or you can divide it by 100, whatever you like to do. And uh, what we're now being tasked to do is we're uh, being tasked to find the tangential uh, acceleration. Okay, so now uh, what we need to f what we need to know is we need to know a relationship then basically between the uh, angular acceleration and the radius. Okay, now how do we find that? Well. Uh, we have a formula for it. I mean, we don't have to derive it. We have a formula. So it's right over here. I just box it in. Okay. So for letter B, uh, that formula over there tells us that the uh, tangential acceleration will be equal to the radius multiplied by the angular uh, acceleration. So here, AT will be equal to the radius. Now, it's the radius of, you know, the essentially... You can substitute radius, you know, another term would be the distance from the axis of rotation to the point of interest, all right? Now, so that's, you, you can substitute that terminology in if you like. 
So the distance there that's important in this problem will be 0 0.0950 multiplied then by my value that I uh, obtained before, which was about the 87.3. So here we have AT will then be equal to, let's just calculate that time 0 0.095. So we get about 8.29. All right, 8.29, and that is now meters per second squared. Remember this is tangential acceleration, aka linear acceleration, means linear distance over time. So those are the units. All right, letter C. What is the radial acceleration in meters per second? All right, so now radial acceleration, you might say, well, what, what in the world is that? Um, it's basically another word for, hold on one second, let me just move that over. It's basically another word for uh, centripetal acceleration, okay? So now if we had to think about, well, how does this now, you know, how does this now connect to uh, concepts of centripetal acceleration and, and so on and so forth? Well, we'd have to now think back to, you know, concepts of uh, circular motion. All right. So in terms of then, so just I'll write it up here. So radial acceleration, basically anything, whenever you hear radial, you can basically substitute that in for centripetal. Okay, so, you know, just reframe the question. It's basically asking you, what is the centripetal acceleration uh, in meters per second squared? So now let's write letter C right here in the middle. So we have to know a formula for the uh, centripetal acceleration, how it relates to some of the variables we have here. So that particular formula is this, that the centripetal acceleration will equal the radius of rotation uh, multiplied then by the angular velocity squared, okay? Um, I'm, I'm actually going to add this equation on over here on the uh, right-hand side uh, later on, all right? So uh, basically all we need to know in order to figure out centripetal acceleration is we need to know the radius right, of rotation and, and also the angular velocity. So here we know all the values, thank goodness. So all we have to do basically, um, and it says of this point at full RPM, by the way, going back to the question, so the full RPM you know, uh, was the 100,000 revolutions per minute, which had the value of this amount of radians per second. So then just plugging in the values, the radius again is still the same, 0 0.0950, multiplied then by the this angular velocity squared. So this is 1.05 times 10 to the fourth, times 10 to the fourth, and that is squared. So the centripetal acceleration will be, let's just plug that on into the calculator now, we got 0 0.095 times, okay, I use the exact value from before over here, which was basically 10,400, what was it, 10,472. So we get a value then in scientific notation going to be approximately 1.04 times 10 raised to the 3, 6, 7 it looks like. And that is in meters per second squared. Okay, and that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 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 almost concluded too quickly, right? I'm getting too excited, getting towards the end of the problem. Uh, it says n multiples of g. Okay, so basically you just take, right? I mean, this is, this is baby stuff now at this point in physics, right? So you take this value and you divide it by the value of g to find how many multiples of g that is, okay? So we're going to take, I'll do it up here on the upper left. So 1.04 times 10 to the seventh, all divided by 9.8. And that'll tell us how many multiples of G we have. So we got how many multiples, this is gonna be 1.06 times 10 to the, what do we got, three, six, looks like about a million, yeah. And that's how many multiples. So about a little over a million multiples of G, which is pretty fast. All right, um, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to hit that, uh, hit that subscribe button. All right, hit the like button if this helped at all. It definitely helps us out tremendously. Uh, we would appreciate it so very much and look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.